The fall elections are less than four months from today. Tempers will rise even higher than they are now. That is guaranteed. Something awful could easily happen. Now, right now, is the time for progressive leaders to douse the fires that they set to calm their inflamed supporters. It is vital they do that. And yet they're doing the opposite. Now they're telling their followers that the president of the United States is a Russian spy, a traitor. The penalty for treason is death. Traitors, of course, must be overthrown. The mob screams, wild with rage. Democrats are banking that that rage will get their voters to the polls in November, and they may be right. It may. It may also destroy the country. Robert Patia was a radio host and an attorney, and he joins us tonight. Robert, thank you for coming on. I have a question Thanks, that Tucker. I wanted to ask for a long time, someone on the left. Why the flag burning in the attacks on America? Why is this? The, well, these protests very often devolve into an attack on the country itself. It's symbols, this chant, America was never great, your founding fathers owned slaves. Why attack the whole country? Well, I think you can find extremists on both the left and the right who do things that are anti-American. The, the same way you have these protesters, you'll have the Charlottesville protesters, on the other hand, who are anti-American. I don't support any of these people who, if you don't like America, get out of America. If you're a neo-Nazi, get out of America. Well, I, kinda, I, I agree with that. Minutes. Look, I'm, so I have no problem with that. But, there's, but, but hold on. Okay. And I think it's a fair point. But the scale is very different. So you have the Charlottesville riot or whatever it was last August, a year ago. You haven't seen anything like that since. The NFL has been in a continuous controversy over kneeling during the national anthem, an attack on a national symbol. Left-wing protests routinely contain attacks on the country. The T-shirt, your country was never great, is for sale online. So is the hat. What is that about? It, I'm not saying there are no conservatives, right wingers who don't hate America, but there are a lot on the left who do. And they're very open about it. Why? And why don't leaders ever say anything about it? Well, I think leaders do, and I think it's very easy to find the clips of the most crazy, most extreme elements of the political discourse and make that seem like that is the norm. That is not the norm. Most people are, who are protesting are saying, we want reasonable policies that all Americans unite, can unite around. And frankly, I think a large part of this falls on the president. You know, President Truman had a placard on his desk saying, the buck stops here. That's what the, that is what President Trump has right. to take up and understand, that he has to bring these parties together. If people are protesting over the immigration policy, then do like Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan would do, and you bring together the stakeholders, you you hammer out an immigration reform bill, you bring right. it before the American people, you discuss it, and that will tamp down the uh, that will tamp down these protests. But leaving this vacuum Boy, of information is... where people think the children are being kidnapped, that's not going to work. Okay, so I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Actually, I do want a rational conversation about what's best for the country. Try to do that every night on this show. It's pretty hard to do that, though, when people are saying, not just random protesters in front of a donut shop in West L.A., but, I don't know, the ranking members on the Democratic side of the House and Senate are calling the president of the United States a traitor, someone who's committed treason, a death penalty offense. If you really believe the president was a Russian agent, as elected members of Congress have said today, then how could you do anything but try to overthrow him? That's not a predicate for reasonable discussion, is it? Well, absolutely not. But what, what, what I think has to happen is the president hasn't explained what the point of the meeting with Putin was, what happened in that meeting with him for those two hours, why there was no other members of the intelligence community or national security staff there with them, why he offered to have Russians interrogate American citizens. So when you have this information vacuum, this falls in a large part on the president's communications well, wait, team wait, wait, wait for a second. not articulating then, then, then to why Americans are they, what hold went on. on. Hold on. I mean, I could look, I could rebut a lot of what you just said. The president can't hand anybody over to the Russians, despite what Democrats keep saying. That, that doesn't work that way. You're not allowed. What is he going to, you know, inject them with barbiturates and throw them on a plane to Mon I mean, that's it's ludicrous. But I, it was not my job to defend Trump. I'm just asking if you don't know what happened, why are you jumping to the conclusion that he committed treason? That's what elected members of Congress are saying. They're using the word treason. If you really believed he was committing treason, why wouldn't you try to overthrow him or hurt him? Seriously. But remember... But remember, this goes back to the concept of the buck stopping with the president. He has to use his bully pulpit not to bully people, but to articulate a message to America. What do you mean? Uh, but, hold on, but what do you say if somebody well, well, says, "Wait, if I said, if I said, I don't agree with you. You're you've committed treason. You're a traitor. You're a sleeper cell for one of our enemies." What do you say to that? I mean, honestly, like you, that's 
What you, that's well, not what you say the that, beginning of a conversation. That is being, that's a call for violence. Look, Tucker, I practice criminal right. defense every day. And what ends up happening is people accuse your client of everything under the sun in the indictment. But what you do is argue back your point. You say that, well, the reason I was meeting with Putin was because we have interest in Syria that need to be articulated between the two parties. Because well, we have to said that. Uh, work on I mean, oil and gas pipelines. The, he's not getting his messaging out. And when you leave this vacuum out there, that's when you have members of the Republican Party. Are you being serious? I mean, are Lake you being serious? Down. Look, I, again, it's... Uh, whatever. I don't care about the Republicans. Everyone always says, oh, the Republicans say it, too. I, I couldn't be less impressed with them as a group. So it, that means nothing to me. <laughs> but will you at least concede that calling someone a traitor is a conversation ender, not a starter? And maybe you should wait for any... evidence that a person has betrayed his country before calling him a traitor. Is that fair? Well, 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 that, that's fair, but let's not pretend that the last eight years, the last 16 years didn't happen. When you had people claiming that Obama was a Kenyan who was part of a sleeper cell sent here and part of a madrasa, let's understand this discourse didn't start with Trump. No we have to do something to tap it down. That. Joe Walsh no, yelled no, out, no, you no lied. No member of Congress ever said address. that. Okay, well, he and, did and, lie, and actually, President, but lying and, is very different from being part Trump, of a sleeper cell. And while being a private citizen, right. President Trump pushed a birtherism idea for years. Let's understand that the buck stops with the president in order to tamp these things down. Have a conversation with so the American people. He's Say exactly what you're. The All buck right. stops with you. You are the leader of the yeah. free world. I, I don't understand your point, but I. I uh, right. I appreciate. I appreciate part of what you're trying to say, uh, but I don't understand the rest. Robert, it's nice to see you tonight. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Tucker.